What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. We're going to be doing the disassembly and maintenance for the Kung Wu Django. Let's get into it. All right, guys, I recommend Weha Bits. You guys know how I feel about having a good set of bits. I actually just had a video recently where I had a very shallow pivot on the knife that I was working on and still couldn't get it off, even with some heat. So I'm sending that one back. That's why it's so important to have good bits, bits that are going to hold up, especially for someone like me that does a ton of their own maintenance and disassembly. That's why I like Weha Bits. The other thing I kind of wanted to cover as well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the mod that I did to my Django. My particular Django is Rocking Magnets. When I first got it, I immediately disassembled it, put the magnets on it, reassembled it. And um, I don't know if it was placement or the depth of the relief cut on this particular model, but it didn't feel as satisfying as even the ones that are on my hollow ground Demco AD 20.5. So I went ahead and put a second set of magnets in here, and I feel like it is perfect now. I like the heavier detent. Very satisfying to thumb flick, even with the opening hole. You guys know I prefer my crossbar locks with thumb studs uh, for the thumb deployment. And this one here locks it in enough to where not only can you not get it out. Whoops. <laughs> um, it does bounce, but the magnets do such a good job. But you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second when we get to disassembling it. Now, it is all T8 construction, except... On the crossbar lock Kunwoos, you need the T6 to remove the pivot here. Um, I am going to just disassemble it from one side to show you guys what it looks like. I'm not going to bother going all the way through to the other side. And truth be told, it makes it very easy construction. These are Chicago style screws, so the barrel goes all the way through to meet the screw to disassemble it. So it should be pretty straightforward. So having said all that, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Remember, everything's linked below. Bits, there's even an affordable bit driver. I have the applicators, lubes. They're just all the way down on the bottom of the links because the tools are kind of the least uh, clicked item. But they are down there for you guys uh, should you need it. Come on. This one here does not want to come out for whatever reason. There we go. Um, it is still hardware. I think that's how they're able to kind of sort of keep it around the $200 price point, especially with, you know, the extra amount of time it takes to do this diamond plating, the stone washing. It's, it's a really good value on these. I like them a lot. I didn't over tighten it. Thank goodness. I thought I got this one all the way out, but I guess not. There we go. Don't go running away. Um, I'm going to set it down now because I don't want those barrels to come out. So then you're just going to go ahead and take your T8, and I would remove the pivot at this point. It is a captive pivot, so it's not going to move around on you too much. I also have found the way that they, for whatever reason, how they do their construction, it really is a non-issue. Now, I went ahead and picked this T8 out. It's a T8 by 40 from Weha, just so I don't have to keep swapping bits and drivers. And I think from what people have told me, they're able to do a little bit better job with this particular bit for whatever reason than they are with um, the t 8s I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's just nice to have it uh, nearby. So just move your titanium crossbar lock stud off to the side here. And you should be able from here, the magnets are pulling it, guys. Uh, to disassemble it with no issues. So I just wanted you guys to see there's a ton of lube here. Um, I also used lithium grease around the studs, around the um, crossbar lock springs, so that it, they, it keeps it rejuvenated. But you can see these are really deep in here, guys. And I, I used epoxy. Uh, the pocket clip screw, uh, pocket clip's trying to come off. I used epoxy to keep these in place and so far everything that i've used the epoxy on has really worked now with the epoxy you want to make sure that you use one that is like a clear epoxy i'll try to link it with a picture right here if my editor can remember <laughs> and what what i typically do 
is I clean the surface. I sand lightly the side that is going to be epoxied or glued down. And I do that just so it makes sure it's not a completely flat, smooth surface. It has something to kind of grip on because the steel liners are going to be pulling it to the side. So I just wanted to just take a moment to kind of show you and talk a little bit about it. I don't want to take my lithium grease out because that's all the way downstairs. And you don't have to use lithium. Um, I just like the lithium grease in this instance for the crossbar lock screws. And I am just going to remove the excess down here. Um, as you can see, it's very dirty from the oil. But I also think that's the stone wash coming loose. All right, so let's go ahead and finish here. If, you, if you're able, you can use your fingernails to kind of dig underneath and lift that out to relieve it. And then what I would recommend at this point is just go ahead and lift your um, barrel up. Come on. It should, with a little bit of encouragement, just slide right off. I think. I dropped it twice now. Hold on. Big hand problems, guys. Big hand problems. There we go. So this comes off. So that does help make this construction a little bit easier. I'm just going to wipe the excess down here. Don't really need it all here. My, I can tell my barrel's coming out there. Um, and then from here, you can just work your liner off. It's going to be a little bit snug. Then you would remove your blade, which I really don't need to do because this is my third time now doing this disassembly. As you can see, it's plenty of lube. Um, I did make a little bit of a mess, but I didn't want to scratch it up too much. If you have like a plastic pry bar or something like that, you can go, if you did like I did, you can go and scrape it up. Uh, but you can just see how far recessed the magnets are, which is why I think it, was such a challenge to get this done so from here you can kind of lift up pull back on your pry bar a little your pry bar your crossbar lock a little bit and lift up on the blade take it apart and then you can just lube and reassemble um, i'm not going to do all of that because i've already lubed and disassembled this i don't even know how many times total now you can see the track is getting nicely worn in um, nothing's really dirty again because this is the third time i took it apart and initially did these two i would say if you want to try to do two first i would do the two that are closer here it's going to end up being on more of the blade surface i think than this one back here um, this one here they both feel pretty recessed but i feel like this one because of where it's at it's going to be in a better position but honestly i have found like the four magnet setup on my Django has really worked for me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install my, oop, come on, get in there. I missed the stop pin. Come on, Lord have mercy, get on there, please. Ugh, is it the crossbar lock? There we go, it's the crossbar lock. Crossbar lock was giving me a fit. Crossbar lock giving me a fit. Stop pin not wanting to see. So now you want to, before you reassemble everything, you want to put this back on. This I do recommend just a little bit of lube. You don't need much. Come on. Honestly, a dab will do you for this one. Go ahead and reinstall. I would recommend putting this on the crossbar lock first. And then the same way that you lift it up to take it off, you can go ahead and just put your fingernail underneath and slide it over. I'm at a really bad angle, so I'm having a hard... I always struggle with this. When I'm over top of it, it's no issue. But when I am on camera, I have a hard time finding the space for it. Um, so I have the lith lithium grease there for... My pocket clip came off. For the crossbar lock springs this one here it's going to try to jump again so i'm going to try to it is really wanting to pull guys <laughs> there we go it is really wanting to pull apart um with these you you just got to be patient i would pull the crossbar lock back and make sure that everything has fallen into place go ahead and install your pivot first that's why i took it out last your pivot's going to really kind of help everything stay in place
make sure everything's pulled together and then I would reinstall one of your body screws and then that should be everything that should be everything that keeps it together for you while you finish putting your pocket clip screw back in and your I'm not sure why it's giving me such a hard time I don't know if it's because my magnet's so strong but you can put your pocket clip back on you can come on now why are you being like that on camera trying to be a little bit of a bonehead aren't you so you can take care of all of that there we go pocket clip and crossbar lock stud can be taken care of once you have the body in place feels a little shallow which is weird let me grab my t6 Go ahead and throw my crossbar lock stud back on. It's very interesting construction. It does take a few extra steps, but truth be told, I think it kind of helps simplify the process. I remember the first time I took one of these apart, I was like, oh my, this is a lot of extra steps. Uh, that should be your last T6, by the way. But truthfully, I think as I've come to do these a bunch, um, it's made it a lot easier to to do the disassembly i would probably say if you aren't ever going to reverse it i would probably recommend while you have that out um maybe at least slightly sanding directly where the pocket clip goes to help keep it from filing away at your at your pocket when it's going in and out um I may go back and do that later. This thing has been apart so many times, it's kind of ridiculous. All right, so no play, nice and loose, still feeling really good. So that's your disassembly and maintenance and just a little bit of an overview of what I did because I didn't do it on camera. I just wanted to get them in and try to dial it in and get it all figured out. And I figured explaining where I what I did and showing you where I put it um, would be good enough to kind of go back over it as opposed to having to repeat and show you what it is that I did with the Demco 8020.5. And I think even with the Demco 8020.5, that video I did it with crazy glue. And everyone was telling me the epoxy is going to hold up better. Um, it's better equipped to handle the vibrations of the blade hitting the stop pin on the open and close. So I went ahead uh, with the 8020.5 and warmed it up and took the crazy glue off and then i went back and put the epoxy on but anyway that's your disassembly and maintenance for the django hopefully this will give you a little bit of encouragement to do the maintenance and disassembly for your crossbar lock Django, Kung Wu, whatever it is, they're all going to be the same. It's not going to be a big difference, guys. I hope this helped you. Shout out to everyone out there that likes, comments, uses those links, and is subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate the support. Support. Shout out to my members. Thank you for being a member. I value that very much. It helps the channel so much, guys. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time. Peace. Peace.